Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Monday, February 6, 2012. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Phoenix Monitor today. We'll talk to Margaret Holzer. The three-time medalist at the Beijing Olympics is now retired from swimming, but still involved in the sport. She's also working with the National Children's Advocacy Center. Margaret joins us right now in the Phoenix Monitor from Seattle. Hey, Margaret, welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. How's life? Good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so uh, I mentioned you're retired from the sport. Are you still swimming at all on the sides? Not really. Um, I did get in the water about a week ago, and it was the first time in six months. So very, very minimally, I guess. We're not thinking about a comeback, are we? It seems to be in vogue these days. <laughs> not yet. Um, if, if, if that starts happening, it'll it's, it's a ways off the road. So no, not at this point. Now, um, back in 2009, most people know, you came out and said that you were uh, sexually abused as a child, and that has led to some of your advocacy work. Tell us, mm -hmm. you know, about what you're doing. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm the national spokesperson for the National Children's Advocacy Center, and I do a lot of work with them. There are 900 advocacy centers across the country and a few scattered in other countries. Um, so needless to say, there's a, a lot of places to go and see and, and, and work with, and Essentially, I, I'm a public speaker, so, you know, some of these places will have me sort of come in to fundraisers that they're having and tell my story and sort of encourage people to, you know, sponsor and, and fund these organizations, you know, because they're all nonprofits. So it's just sort of raising awareness and, and generally trying to help get the community involved. How did, you know, telling people your story of what happened to you change you? You know, it was it was a relief in some ways because I mean, obviously, I've I've known about it since it happened, and and my family has known about it since I was eleven, and then in, in varying degrees with friends and whatnot, and it was just kind of a relief to not have to worry about it. You know, it's it's always that awkward feeling of you know in a relationship with someone, you know, when do I bring this up? When do I sort of drop this bomb? And now it's kind of out there, so there's not really any worry about, oh, I have to dance around the issue or worry about what they're going to think. And I don't know. It, it was just a big relief, and, and that it's not a secret anymore. Can you give us some perspective on how big of a problem this is in America? Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's, it's one in four girls, one in six boys. So that's a, a pretty large chunk of the population. Holy cow. Well, thank you for, very much for the work that you're doing. Thank you. You know, I read a recent story about uh, a kid that you met in Alabama. Is that right? It's mm -hmm. a kid with no legs, only one arm, and he has a dream of being on the Paralympic swim team. Yeah. Pretty incredible story. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Tell absolutely. us about him. Um, well, Gabe Marsh is from Gunnersville, Alabama, which is probably 30, 40 minutes outside of Huntsville, Alabama, where I grew up. And the whole thing got started, um, my stepdad read an article about this little boy in the paper and thought it would be something I was interested in. in. So, you know, him and my mom mailed a copy of the newspaper to me, and uh, I believe I was living in California at the time. You know, and of course I was very inspired by it and thought, you know, maybe, maybe the next time I'm home, you know, maybe I can just meet this guy. And uh, with the help of USA Swimming and, and, and Russell Mark in particular, um, I was able to get together a little goodie bag of USA Swimming, you know, apparel and just paraphernalia and all that kind of fun stuff. So anyways, um, we contacted the reporter and uh, he set up, you know, called the family and asked if we could meet. So that sort of set us up and I, and I got to meet Gabe and it, it was very, truly amazing. I mean, he's a, a normal, normal, typical six-year-old, you know, I mean, we were at the swimming pool and he just kept inching closer and closer and, you know, his mom was like, you know, you have to wait till you take the lifeguard swimming test. Like you can't just run and jump in and, <laughs> he, you know, I mean, he just wanted to get in as soon as he could. It was precious. Very nice. What are your thoughts on the USA uh, women's swim team right now heading into this Olympic season? I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that they're going to do pretty good. Um, I, you know, I haven't been keeping super close in touch with a lot of the results, but I mean, just knowing the people that were swimming and especially the young ones that were up and coming sort of my last two years of swimming, I, you know, I think we've got a lot of good people to choose from and, you know, nothing to worry about. Yeah. Uh, Missy Franklin's not bad, huh? Yeah, not so much. <laughs> 
You know, a, a lot of people said that you were a quote unquote suit swimmer, that you had a lot of success because of the high tech suit era. What do you think of that? Um, you know, I obviously very much disagree with that. And, you know, my argument is, you know, I was on the national team from 2002 until 2010. And only one of those years was a suit year. And, you know, I, I had gone a 207 in my twinner backstroke, for example, the year before the suits. So, you know, I dropped about eight tenths, which in my mind isn't the kind of drops that, that we were seeing the true suit swimmers do. The true suit swimmers, in my opinion, were dropping three and four seconds in a 200. And I didn't think nine tenths was, you know, that much, relatively speaking. Um, did it help me at all? I'm sure it did. I think it helped everybody a little bit. But no, I, I guess I just feel like my career as a whole should stand by the fact that, you know, I wasn't swimming in a suit, you know, the bulk of that time. Do you think it's a good thing that the high tech suits are gone? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've heard rumors that they're coming back and that just makes me glad I'm retired. Well, uh, so no comeback this summer necessarily, but <laughs> maybe it sounds like it's still in the back of your mind a little bit. Uh, you know, you never want to rule things out. You know, I'm, I'm pretty content with where I am, but you, you never want to just completely close a door to something. So, it, you know, you never know. Well, Margaret, good luck with uh, wherever your career takes you. Thank you very much for joining us. Great. Thank you so much. All right. That's Margaret Holter joining us in the Phoenix Monitor today from Seattle. And that is it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.